Um, we'll be looking at Mark 3:31 through 35. If you guys want to turn there. The, uh, the setting is Jesus, it's really early in, in his ministry, and uh, he's already healed a few people. He's healed the leper. He's healed the paralytic. He's challenged the Pharisees about what the Sabbath really is. And so now the Pharisees want to kill him, and um, he's trying to eat in a house, and it's too crowded because there's a buzz about Jesus. People are gathering around for him, and he can't even eat. And we pick up outside of his house. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and brothers, he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him. And he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Jesus openly denied knowing his mom. And not just knowing, but said, they're not my family. These people here, sitting in a circle, that's my family. Why? Why would he do that? Why would, that's Virgin Mary he's talking about. That's Virgin Mary he's talking about. Well, ex-Virgin Mary, because now we see that brothers, he's, he did have brothers. So, they were probably half, you know, half brothers. And because just to further emphasize on that, brother, the word, the original Greek, adolfeia, that means, that means immediate family. But of course, we could use brothers as, hey, brah, you know, just, just, any, just any person or, you know, close, close friend or anything. We could use that in, a, in that term of endearment. But in the book of Mark, everywhere you find brothers in the book of Mark, it actually literally means um, the immediate family, blood relatives. So that's how we know that, you know, Virgin Mary did have sons and, you know, ex-Virgin Mary now. Um, I guess the, the second thing to come across is what's God's will, right? Because he said, whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. So I guess our next point would be, how do I figure out God's will for my life? And I'm, I just want to get a little personal with you guys for just a second. Um, I, this is something I've struggled with. I've, I've, I've struggled with the fact, just kind of knowing, God, what's, God's, what's your will for my life? What do you want me to do? I've asked him so many times, look, just tell me what you want from me, and I'll do it. Okay, I, I know better not to just struggle and stuff. Just tell me what you want from me, and I'll do it. And so many times, we just ask him for answers. We ask for that easy way out. We ask, God, just, just do everything for me. Instead of asking him, what's your will for my life? Maybe you should ask him, God, grant me wisdom so I could figure some stuff out and to figure out the best way to glorify you. When has God made it easy for anyone? He's always, te he's always testing us in that fire. To, why? So we could mature and grow in our spiritual walk. That's why, because th when, when you face despair, when you face uncertainty, and you say, God, I turn to you, it doesn't, any, nothing else in this world matters. You will see me through this. You are the source of my strength. That's what brings God the most glory, and that's what he's after. He's not after if it's easy for you. Jesus, Jesus was, look at the way Jesus was treated while he was on this earth. He was beaten, he was spat upon, he was hated, he was chased after, he was pursued. How would you expect anything less? No servant is greater than his master. God's will and the world's will do not mix. They are opposing ideas and you could only serve one or the other. And this is why we need a church. so we could relate to people who also do God's will because people will call you crazy. Your own family might call you crazy. If they don't do God's will, they will. And that's why he put such an emphasis on spiritual family above earthly families. It's because when you do God's will, it's, a lot of the times it's out there. You're, you're not sure what you're doing. Sometimes it's crazy. You've got to live like 
I mean, would it make sense if you really believed in what that book teaches? If you really believe that the God of the universe sent his son to die upon a cross for our sins, took our punishment, rose again from the, from the dead to tell you that I love you, you wouldn't just come to church once a week, tithe 6% and try to cuss less. That's not a radical way of living for a radical love that you, that you got from God. It doesn't make sense. You do God's will, you will be, you'll be so just out there that people will be like, what's gotten into him? He's crazy. The Pharisees called Jesus possessed by Beelzebub, by the prince of demons. If you really believe in what you believe, you're going to, God's will for your life isn't just complacency. It's a radical way of living. Um, I came to Pastor Scott before, uh, before he left, and I, and I told him, I was like, this, I'm feeling, you know, I'm feeling too well-liked. <laughs> Everywhere. People like me too much. And that's a problem. Because what does that say about my life? Because Jesus wasn't liked. He was hated. Hated by the world. Am I living for Christ if everyone likes me? And that could say, that could say multiple things. If you're just hanging out with Christians, that's a problem because how are you going to spread the word? If you're just hanging out with, with just non-believers and they like you and they, don't, and they accept your faith, you, are you living too complacent? Is your faith not... Is, that's a problem because then when people can, cannot determine whether or not you're a Christian or not, that's a problem. Because it should be the center of your life, not something on Sundays. John 